It's a Sunday afternoon in 1976. I am four, riding between my parents in the front seat of the station wagon as my father cruises westward along Interstate 80. The country's in the middle of a gasoline shortage, and so we keep pace with the other cars obedient to the 55 miles per hour speed limit. My two sisters and oldest brother share the back seat, and my youngest brother sits on a felted wool blanket in what we call the far, far back. It must be late summer, because we are on our way to the Gustafson's Ranch to pick up several bags of ripe fruit for my mother's homemade preserves. She has the voice of a poet. That is, for me, absolutely clear. Sometimes I think it's dangerous to, to find a tone of voice yes. which is fresh. It's not easy. Yes. It's wonderful if you detect this sort of potential in somebody. She has a prose project, but it's, of course, a different kettle of fish entirely. I've been wanting to write about my family for a long time, and I have started and stopped and started and stopped over and over again. This mentoring relationship has really kind of been the nudge that says, yes, you do want to do that, and you can, and it's safe, and here's someone who's willing to look at it and to give you input as an artist. We're heading to Mr. Gus's ranch because my father loves to eat two pieces of toast with his breakfast and to fold each slice around a pat of butter and pears cooked to an impossible sweetness and spiced with cinnamon and cloves, or two figs in thick amber syrup. You're opening yourself up to the chaotic and important energy that you possess, and you're kind of going to, to battle with it in a way. And then because you are concerned with language and logic and form, you're also trying to do the dance to keep it all afloat at the same time. Everybody has some kind of historical luggage on their shoulders. It's also a capital as a writer that you have something to offer. There is something that looks like mischief flashing on my mother's face as she tears a fig in two and hands half of it to my father. When she offers me one, I say, no thank you repulsed by the white pith and the pulpy flesh. It looks like a venomous sea creature, but when she lifts it to her lips, she sighs like a woman on television who has just lowered herself into a tub full of bubbles. The working dynamic between us, it's been about a really intense focus that is accompanied by a really joyful ease. It's not a hierarchical thing, it's a conversation. There's even a certain elegance to it. It's wonderful. Is probably going to stand out in my mind as this bridge that I've crossed to get to a bigger sense of myself as a writer. 